you guys. So street photography composition. When it comes to street photography, one of the most important things to learn is composition. And today I wanna give you guys an introduction on three basic compositions that you guys can master by the end of this video so that the next time you go out on the street, you can make some incredible street photos. you guys so today we are in the streets of San Francisco because we're gonna be doing street photography composition live out here on the street so I wanted to bring this new dynamic into play because I feel like anybody can just sit in front of a camera at home and just talk about it but I want to take you guys in the field with my actual camera you know kind of give you guys a little perspective on how things are done just so you guys can get a first-hand look at how these compositions work now before we even jump into any type of composition tips, I want to just preface this by saying composition is kind of just a guideline for you to follow. As a matter of fact, your composition should be a tool to enhance your photograph story. The three basic compositions we're going to be talking about today are leading lines, subframes, and symmetry. Now these are what I consider to be the absolute fundamentals and they are surprisingly very, very simple and easy to master. All right, so the first compositional element we're gonna be talking about is a leading line. Now your leading lines are probably gonna be the most simple thing because you can find them pretty much anywhere in the world. And all a leading line is, folks, is it's gonna be a line that's going to drag your eye through the frame to hopefully enhance the story and you know highlight some more detail that you are trying to show. So in this case, I'm showing you guys different examples of what a leading line can look like and then you guys can decide yourself when you go out onto the street which ones you want to use so the first way you can look for a leading line is to simply find something that is a literal line so something like a guardrail all the way up the steps from this video you guys can already see the leading line is taking you from this corner of the frame bottom left all the way down to the middle or to the right now imagine if there was somebody walking through the frame here if you position your subject right here, that is a great leading line. So that's just one example of how you can use it. And these things you can find pretty much anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be a guardrail. It could be a cement block. It could be something that forms repetition similar to this right here. Uh, you guys can see kind of how each of these little nooks create some sort of line of direction. Uh, the point is your leading line needs to have a start and a finish. And you wanna utilize that leading line to kind of go across the entire frame so that you can highlight some of those storylines. So here's a great example of a leading line that isn't your most common. These shapes right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. The shapes right here kind of create a V. So not only is this creating like a subframe, but you're encapsulating your subject in that highlighted area. But you're also using the V almost as like leading lines. So when you go to make that photograph, you line that up. The right one going this way is basically my main subject or excuse me, my main leading line. So when someone walks through the frame, like the right there, you know, easily, you can kind of capture them moving in. All right, so here are a few more examples of how I use leading lines in my photographs. Now, as you can see, I'm not just using the conventional curves or just straight leading lines. I kind of try to switch it up and get creative with it using birds, sometimes even just going around using these staircases as leading lines. They are absolutely everywhere. So if you can find leading lines in any situation, use it to your creative advantage and draw more attention to your subject, that is going to effectively create a much better photograph compositionally. So with leading lines out of the way, the next composition tip we're gonna be talking about, folks, is the subframe. And the subframe, just like the leading line, can be found anywhere in the world. Once you get a better understanding of how subframes can be used, uh, there's an unlimited amount of creativity that you can use to just create some interesting looking compositions. Let's talk about subframes. Alright guys, 
Uh, so subframes are actually extremely simple. All they are are just frames within a frame. Now ideally you want an enclosed frame, something like a window or for example, we're doing this live on the street here, but even an opening, something like this trash can that has, you know, four corners, one, two, three, and four, that is a subframe. And the crazy thing is uh, subframes and leading lines are absolutely everywhere. Anything that you can use to your advantage as composition on the street, the better. And you're gonna get more and more creative with it. And you're gonna realize that there are a lot more things than just windows, doors, small openings that are considered subframes. If you really wanna get creative with it, you can even use things like mirrors. Mirrors, because they are in some sort of enclosed frame, they offer a great subframe that you can use to capture your own reflection in the photograph. And that's another element you can use out on the street. But just to give you guys a quick little reference, what you guys saw earlier right here, that right there, folks, is a subframe, just this little nook. Now, why subframes are powerful is because you're basically framing something in the middle of the frame or off to the side just to draw attention. So being able to place something right there, a subject matter right dead center, it's gonna allow you to focus in and draw more attention on just that subject. So boom, that is a subframe. Learn how to utilize these effectively and then just continue on making photographs. The goal is to find three more subframes and then we're gonna do a little recap as we continue on as to you know the thought process behind each of the photographs. Let's go. Alright guys, so the last composition we're going to be talking about is going to be talking about symmetry. Now symmetry is very, very simple. It all has to do with the human eye and just how we see things and what our eyes prefer. We prefer even numbers. We like things that come in pairs. And so when you use symmetry in a photograph, it's always going to be much more appealing than just having something that doesn't look balanced. So what exactly can you use for symmetry? Well, ladies and gentlemen, just like the leading lines and just like subframes, Symmetry is everywhere. Think of it like a piece of paper and you're doing a drawing. When you fold that paper in half, the other side should look exactly like the other. It almost should look like a mirror. And when you can do that with your compositions, you're gonna get images that look a lot more appealing to the eye naturally. But the type of symmetry that we're gonna be taking photos of today are gonna have to do with mirrors and reflections. So I'm gonna be singling out a couple of different scenes and compositions that utilize some type of mirror or reflection just so that I can show you guys how symmetry works and just how effective it can be for your street photography. Let's go ahead and find some symmetry and we'll make some more photographs. So here's an example of using a reflection from a window to create symmetry. You can use windows, mirrors, anything that creates a symmetrical composition. But it doesn't always have to be a perfect mirror. Symmetry can be two subjects that have a duality. It doesn't always have to strictly follow these rules. And the beauty of the three basic compositions are that once you practice these enough, you can start layering them and make even more complex compositions. And this is why I consider them to be the absolute fundamentals and the main three you should learn first. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember, it doesn't matter where you are, there's always a composition to be made. The world is your canvas and all it takes is practice and your camera to create beautiful compositions. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos. But this has been King Japes. Till next time, Minolta Gang.